Hello everyone. Welcome to our last minute revision videos. I exactly understand how you feel about your first max exam in couple of days. You may thinking where to start for the revision. Shall I do some papers or revise or go for a walk? Please relax. We work hard day and night to prepare the whole math syllabus, nearly 90 topics in simple slideshow, so that you can watch in few hours to bring back all your memory, methods, shortcuts, tricks in the fingertips. The videos split into three sections, 30 topics each. That's it. I take this opportunity to thank you, all of you, all the subscribers, you guys are amazing. And we wish you all the best for your upcoming exams. Good luck. Let's look at the topics. Hello everyone. This is the topic 31. Transformation of graphs. So in this case, there are 10 categories. Uh, the graph can be transformed to another shape. So in your question, they will ask... Uh, to find out the transformed graphs, minimum point, or sketch the graph, that kind of questions. First, understand the theory, 10 theory, very quickly. The first one is, y equal fx is my red graph, and if they ask for y equal minus fx, that is the reflection of x. So, x coordinate is not going to change, but y coordinate will change. Y coordinate will go to the opposite sign. Question number two, the topic two here is the y equal fx is given and y equal f of minus x. The minus is inside the bracket. In that case, it's the reflection of y axis. Reflection of y axis means y coordinate never change, x coordinate will change with the opposite sign. Type three, y equal fx plus 2. So fx is my red graph here and fx plus 2 mean the entire graph will go two units up. So the green graph is the fx plus 2 graph. At the same time, y equal fx is given fx minus 2 mean the entire graph is going to be moving downwards by two units. In that case, x coordinate is not going to change y coordinate is moved by two units. Next one is y equal fx is given and f of x plus 2. y equal f of x plus 2 mean the plus 2 inside the bracket. In that case, the entire graph is going to move left hand side to unit. So moving left hand side to units for that one and this one, y equal fx is given, which is the red graph. And if it is f of x minus 2, you do the opposite one, moving right hand side plus 2 unit. So reflection on the x axis, if the minus coming outside. If the minus coming inside the bracket, reflection on the y axis. fx plus 2 mean graph is moving up fx minus 2 mean graph is, graph is going down, um, fx plus 2 mean graph is moving left, f of x minus 2 mean the graph is moving right hand side. Topic 32 is the rest of the four types is um, if the fx is given two times of fx, what will happen to the y coordinate double by the uh, Coordinate, so two times of the y coordinate, but x coordinate never change. Here, y equal fx is given, and if they ask for y equal half of fx, half is basically 0 0.5 here. So half of fx means y coordinate is divided by 2, but x coordinate remains same. The next one is y equal f of 2x inside the bracket. So the 2 comes inside the bracket means you need to divide by the 2 of the x coordinate. So here you can see the x coordinate 4 becomes 2. So the graph is going to be a little bit squashed. Half scale factor squashed. 
the last pattern is y equal fx is given y equal f of half x means the graph is going to be times by 2 um, the graph is going to be stretched so the x coordinate is going to be expand so the 2 become 4 right and the y coordinate never change y coordinate remains same the minimum point or maximum point will be stretched out so those are the transformation of the graphs topic 33 in the topic 33 velocity time graph i hope you already studied this in physics but just to quickly run through the theory uh, as a fast minute uh, last minute uh, advance in the velocity time graph the area under the curve gives the distance if you see this uh, graph between 0 to 4 the particle car or someone is accelerating a uh, constant acceleration if they want the acceleration during this part changing velocity 8 minus 0 is 8 the time taken is 4 seconds so 8 divided by 4 is 2 meter per second square right this is the acceleration and this journey is called deceleration deacceleration right deacceleration means you are doing opposite to the acceleration you are slowing down so the deceleration here is become 0 0 um, and the prompt 8 so 8 minus 0 over the time taken 7 to 10 which is 3 so 8 over 3 meter second minus 2 or meter per second square is the deceleration if you ask for acceleration you can put acceleration is negative 8 upon 3 meter second minus 2 one important thing the middle portion here is the constant velocity that's like um, when you're traveling in a motorway you press a button called cruise control the cruise control system in the engine maintain the speed um, without dropping off uh, going speeding up just to maintain the speed so that is called constant velocity right the blue graph here is more acceleration higher acceleration than this red line so the more steeper the graph more acceleration than the less steep graph so if they're giving two lines in your graph and asking tom is running and uh, david is also running tom's graph is blue and uh, david's graph is red right so who is speeding up quickly in the first two three seconds is the tom because he is accelerating very fast and he reached 10 velocity uh, 10 meter per second in two second and uh, as far as uh, david reach to four meter per second in two seconds right so tom is accelerating more than david so other than that so rest of the questions will be uh, repeated or same uh, area under the curve gives the distance travel that is the topic 33 topic 34 is the distance time graph the distance time graph the distance itself can be calculated by the y-axis because that is the distance, right? Here the area giving nothing. So you don't calculate anything accidentally, but just exam tension, uh, don't calculate the area of the distance time graph. The distance can be calculated using the y-axis. Say for an example, if you look this graph, is a question, the first zero to the 25 seconds the particle is moving away from the starting point this is not acceleration this is traveling in a constant speed so if they ask for a constant speed for this one so that constant speed is going to be 50 um, meters traveled in 2.5 seconds so you can press the calculator and find out the speed for this one and 25 uh, seconds to 60 seconds during this time the particle is taking a break stationary talking to your friend a cyclist had a puncture and just spending some time to repair so that is the breaking time and this the graph next to it the line c is still moving away from the starting point so if the curve is let me draw a curve from here to here like that now this curve d is the return journey so this d journey is the return journey anything like a positive gradient so the a and c are moving away from the starting point the d is coming back to the starting point 
and um, so total distance travel means 0 to 80 is the going back journey if they ask for total distance travel 80 in going back and coming back another 80 80 plus 80 160 is the total distance travel so here the gradient gives the speed not the acceleration here the horizontal line gives the braking time not the constant speed as before here this is the braking time moving away from the starting point return to the journey at the end that is the topic 34 topic 35 exact trig values this is the table you must remember sometimes they might put this in the non-calculator paper so in this topic you must learn all the standard angles of the trigonometry so standard angle means like a 0 30 45 60 and 90 for the sine cosine and tan if you already remember that's fine if you don't remember until this time please look at this explanation i will give you a, a quicker way to remember this one all what you want to do is you put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then square root the number. Square root of 0, square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 4. Then divide by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2 divide by 2. So the actual answer is 0 square root is 0, 0 divided by 2 is 0. And 1 square root is 1, 1 divided by 2 is half. Square root of 2 is square root of 2. And square root of 3 is square root of square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 4 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that is the answer if you check the right hand side table this is the answer for sine of the standard angle so this is how i remember so how to do that 0 1 2 3 4 then square root and divide by 2 you get the answer in case if you forgot in the exam hall just look quickly draw a table and follow the steps then once you fill up the sign table then write that in a reverse order so one comes here root 3 over 2 comes here, root 2 over 2 comes here, then this half goes here, so half, then the 0 goes there. So everything here in the sign value, um, reverse order writing is the first value, that's easy. Then the tan value, right, tan value is a sign value divided by cos value. So 0 divided by 1 is 0. Half divided by root 3 over 2 is 1 over root 3 or root 3 over 3. Both are same rationalizing. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2 divide is 1. Root 3 over 2 divided by 1 over 2 is root 3. And in max, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So you don't need to know that answer. It's going to be an infinity. Not defined in max. Any number cannot divide by 0. So that is the way to remember the um, trick exact value for the standard angle 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Topic 36 Ratio and proportion. Let's do an exam style question and show you how the proportion and the ratio works in DCS maths. A bag contains red and blue counters in the ratio 1 is to 3. When four red counters are added to the bag, the ratio changes to 1 is to 2. Work out the number of blue counters in the back. So here they have given a red is to blue is 1 is to 3. So that means x counters of red with 3x counters of blue. Right? So when red counters, more red counters, 4 of them is added with the um, red counter so x plus 4 now the blue counters is remain same 3x that ratio is 1 is to 2 so x plus 4 divided by 3x this is the red and this is the blue 
equal 1 is to 2 ratio. Cross multiply, so 2x plus 8 equal 3x. Then if you rearrange, you get x equal 8. So x equal 8 means initially 8 red marbles and 24 blue marbles in the back. So they're asking work out the number of blue counters is 24. That is the answer for the first question. Second question, last year Zain takes some um, hope pay uh, with the salary, so 18,000 is salary. He spent 35 percentage of this on his rent. 35 percentage means 35 over 100 times by 18,000. So 2020 0, 0 cancels, so 180 times by 35. So unfortunately, this is a non calculator paper. You may be able to do a long division, long multiplication very quickly. So 5, 0, 5, 8, 40, 4 remaining, 5, and 5 plus 4 is 900. 3, 0, 3, 8, 24, 2, 5, 0, 0, 3, and 6,300. So 18,000 take away 6,300 because it's a rental money. 0, 0, 7, uh, 1, 1. So 11,700 he spent on living expenses and um, clothes and entertainment. In the ratio, 3 is to 1 is to 2. How much did Zain spend on living expenses? Living expenses is 3 portion out of 6 portion. So 3 upon 6 means half. So half of the money, half of the remaining money he spent on living expenses which is 11 divided by 2 is 5 and 8, 5, 0. That is the money he spent on living expenses. So the ratio and uh, proportion just to try to understand the basics and you can do the question. Question number, topic number 37. Direct and inverse proportion. So the direct proportion is y is proportional to x. So you need to introduce the y equal kx. K is a constant and you will find in the um, question. They will give some values. You substitute and find the K. Whereas inverse proportion means Y is inversely means 1 over X. So you need to introduce Y equal K over X for a constant. And the graph goes like that. Y equal K over X. You don't need to worry about the graph and try to understand the formula. Let's do a question and show you quickly. Y is inversely proportional to the cube root of x. So y is inversely proportional to 1 over cube root of x. So cube root of x means x and this is the cube root of x. So in order to make it as an equation, y equal k over cube root of x. Now they are giving value y equal 8 equal k over square a uh, cube root of 1 upon 8. Cube root of 1 upon 8 is k over 1 upon 2. So cube root of 1 upon 8 is 1 upon 2. So then you multiply cross multiply k equal 8 times half which is k equal 4. So the equation turned to y equal 4 upon cube root of x and that is the part a part b the value of y when x equal 1 1 over 124 so the b part first part how i'm going to do y equal 4 over cube root of 1 upon 125 you know that how to do this one 1 upon 125 is cube root is 1 upon 5 then this bottom 5 is going to be go up so 4 times 5 is 20 is the answer for first part. Second part, the value of x when y equal 2. So let me do it here, the second part. When y equal 2, so 2 equal 4 cube root of x. Cross multiply, 4 times 1 is 4 equal 2 cube root of x. Divide by 2, so 2 equal cube root of x, both sides I'm going to cube it, 8 equal x. So that is the answer for the 
second part. That is the topic direct and inverse proportion. Topic 38, percentage. So percentage for the non-calculator paper, say for example, 7% of 250 means. So 7% can be broken down to 1% times 7. So 1% of 250 is 2.5. All what you want to do is divide by 100. Then 7% you times that by 7. So 2.5 times by 7 is 17.5. That is the easiest way to do that for a non-calculator paper. So in the other method, 30 percentage of 40, you can write 30 over 40 or 30 over 100 times 40. You cut the zero and you cut the zero. So you become 3 over 10 times 40. Then you cut the zero, cut the zero. 3 times 4 is 120 over 10. And you straight away know the answer 12. Percentage change. Percentage change means amount of change over original amount times by 100. So you need to know amount of change is the new price, take away the old price, always divide by the original price, right? So original amount times by 100 gives a percentage change. Let's do this question. A bottle of lemonade normally contains 500 milliliter, special edition version, 15% uh, extra free, how much lemonade is in the special bottles? So 15% 15, 15 over 100 times 500. So cut the zero, cut the zero. 15 times 5 is 75 milliliter. So the total volume is 500 plus 75 is 575 milliliter. That is the answer for the um, question. Let's do the topic 39. So the topic 39, finding the sale price. So you buy an electric organizer that is on sale for 15% off. 15% off, the original price is 25. So 25 pounds was the original price, OP. And we need to find out the sale price. Um, but 15% they are giving off. So you can find the 15 percentage and take away, um, so you can do that one, or the multiplier. The multiplier is 15 percentage of me, 100 take away 15 is 85. So 0 0.85 is the multiplier. So 0 0.85 times by 25 is the answer for the sales. Rate. So 5 times 5, 25, 2 remaining. 5 times 8, 40, 42. 2 times 5, 10, 17. Then add them up, 5, 2, 1, 2, and 21.25 is the sale price. So you can do the multiplier method, or you can find the 15 percentage, say for example, 15 percentage means 15 over 100 times 25, so 25 goes into 1 and 25 goes into 4. 15 over 4 is going to be um, 3.75 something like that. Uh, 12 and 3 remaining. So I think 3.75. So you take away 25 pounds, take away 375, you will get the same 21.25. So you can do either method, but family editor. Multiplier method is much easier. 15 percent discount mean 100 take away 15 is 0 0.85. The second question is Tom bought his house for 140,000. The house price increased by 20 percent since he bought. So find out the current house price. So 140,000 now increased by 20 percent. You can find the 20 percentage and add them up. That is first method. Let me do that one quickly. So 20 percentage over 20 over 100 times 140,000. And two zeros, two zeros cancel. And zero, two times zero, zero, eight to 28,000. Add them up, 168,000 is the house price now. If you want the multiplier method, 20 percentage increase means 20 add with 100, 120 divide by 100 with the multiplier 1.20. So the multiplier is 
So, 140,000 times by 12, 1.2 will give the 168,000 for you. So, that is the way to do that one. Um, topic 40, finding the original price. A cell phone is on a sale of 30% sale. So, 30% drop. So, it was 100% before. Now, 30% drop, 70% is the price now. If the sale is 280, so 280 pounds is the sale price. Now, they are asking what would be the original price. So, 70% is 280. And if you say 10%, you divide by 77. And I divide this by 7 is 40 pounds. 100% is the original price. I'm times in by 10. Here, times in by 10 is 400, which is the original price of the cell phone. Second question, a pair of pants sale price is 12 pounds. So, 12 pounds is the sale price. This is 50% above the original price. So, 50% somebody has put a markup, not discount, markup, above the original price. So, original price is 100% means... 50% above me, you add them up, 150% is 12 pounds. So, work out the original price. So, 150% is 12 pounds. I'm dividing by 3, dividing by 3, and this becomes 50%, it becomes 4 pounds. If 50% is 4 pounds, 100% you can times by 2, both sides so eight pounds is the answer so that is the answer for the topic 40. topic 41 compound interest so you need to remember this formula a equal p brackets one plus r over 100 to the power n a is the total amount after n years p is the original value the investment value and rate equal rate of the interest per annum, number of intra, number of years um, you deposited the money is the F. So let's look at this question quickly. Example, David invests thousand pounds for three years at 5.5 .5 per annum, compound interest. Find the total money David have in the bank after three years. All what you want to do is just A equal, the initial money P 1 plus R over 100 to the power N. So initial money is 1000, 1 plus 5.5 5 over 100 to the power N is 3. So this is 1000 times 5.5 5 .5 divided by 100 is 0 0.055. So 1 plus 0 0.055 to the power 3 which is we know 1000 times 1 1.055 to the power 3 so this is going to be in a calculator paper so i'm not expecting you to multiply and get the answer so just let's call upon my calculator here a 0 and a 1.055 to the power 3 and the answer is that times 1000 and the answer is 1174 so 1174 is the amount of money after three years in this time um, topic 42 depreciation the reason why i put together uh, this both equation together in compound interest, the same formula, depreciation also same formula, but only you need to remember the minus in between. So the A is depreciated value, P is original value, R is rate of depreciation, N is number of years. What is the depreciated value of 12,000? Say for example, you bought a car for 12,000 at 20% per year for 3 years. So the depreciated value equal 12,000 pounds times 1 minus 20 over 100 to the power 3, right? So, 12,000 12, 12, times 
0.2, 1 take away 0.2 is 0.8 to the power 3. So that is the answer. So let's do the calculator. So 0.8 to the power 3 and the answer is that times 12,000 and that is equal 6,144. So that is the depreciated value after three years. So remember the equation with a minus is depreciation plus is for compound interest. Topic 43, unit conversion. You must know all this uh, in your head. Um, I'm not saying that in gallons and liters is going to be coming in exam, but make sure that you know this one. One mile equal 1.6 kilometer, five miles equal eight kilometer, one kilogram equal 2.2 pounds. One centimeter cube equal one milliliter. You need to know this one because 1,000 centimeter cube equal 1,000 milliliter, which is one liter. So 1,000 centimeter cube equal one liter. You need to remember this one. So. As long as you remember this one, you times by both sides by 1000 and you get the answer. 1 gallon equal 4.5 liters. And here importantly, area units, 1 meter square means 1 meter times 1 meter, which is 100 centimeter times 100 centimeter. Same as 1 meter cube is 1 meter times 1 meter times 1 meter. You need to times the 100 three times. Then the answer is 10, 1 meter. So, 2, 4, 6. So, 10 to the power 6 centimeter cube. Maybe 1 million centimeter cube. So, that is the unit conversion. Topic 44 is a compound measure. In the compound measure, you must remember the formula. They are not going to give the formula to you. Distance, speed, time formula. It's a triangle formula. When you want the distance, it's colored in yellow here. Speed times time. When you want the time, is distance divided by speed. When you want the speed, distance divided by time. And that is the one set of equation. The second one is mass density volume. If you want the density, mass divided by volume. If you want the volume, it's mass divided by density. And if you want the mass, it's density divided by times by volume. D times V is M. The next set of equation is area, pressure and force. Pressure equal force divided by A, area equals force divided by pressure, force is equal to pressure times area. So the answer for the average speed, if they're giving a journey with a couple of split details, the total distance covered divided by total time taken, it's going to be the average speed. So total distance tra uh, traveled, Divide by time taken is going to be the average speed. Topic number 45, angles. You must familiar with the basic information. Sometimes you make, make careless mistake. Make sure you understand the basics. Angles in a triangle, 180 degrees, adds up to. Angles in a quadrilateral, add up to 360. Angles around the point is add up to 360. So in this question, you need to add 25, 105, 90. Add them up and take away from 360 to get this answer. Angles in a straight line, 180. Angles vertically opposite are going to be equal. So this angle equal to this angle, you make an equation and you solve for the x. So vertically opposite angles are equal. The next one, angles in a right angle is 90 degrees. So x plus 62 equal 90 and you can solve for x. So that is the topic for 44. Topic 46. Parallel lines. In this topic you must be familiar with the alternate angles which is a z shape, corresponding angles which is a f shape, interior co-interior angles add up together uh, 180. So co-interior angle add up together so if say if I put this as a a, this as a b, and this A plus B equal 180. But F shape is the corresponding angle. That angle equal to that angle. 
and the z shape z shape is this angle equal to this angle so you must familiar with the names for uh, reasoning so you must write the answer with a reasoning uh, reason to get the full marks so alternate angles always is a shape and corresponding angles is a f shape and co interior angle is add up together 180 topic 47 is a polygons angles inside the interior angles in a polygon is you can use this formula n minus 2 times 180 which n is number of sides if it is a pentagon or hexagon here so hexagon here 6 take away 2 is 4 4 times 180 is 540 is the total angle um, added together for a polygon if it is a regular polygon you can divide the 540 divide by 5 which gives 108 is the each interior angle so each interior angle is the 108 number of sides so here 540 on the top and number of side is uh, 5 and that is going to be the 108 now if you know the 108 as an interior to get the exterior angle what you want to do take away from 180 180 take away 108 is 72 degrees that is the outside outside angle is 72 degrees exterior angles for any polygons all the exterior angles add up to 360 for 360 divide by number of sides gives a one exterior angle or if you have 360 divide by one exterior angle that gives number of sides number of sides it is a regular polygon right let's uh, concentrate this question this question is a pentagon so pentagon means 5 minus 2 times 180 3 times 180 is 540 540 divided by 5 uh, uh, so here I made a mistake here let me quickly correct the uh, mistake here so 180 is correct here I can't divide by 5 here 6 right 6 sided shape is a hexagon so 4 times uh, this answer is wrong 4 times 180 is 720 so 720 uh, divided by 6 is 120 and 120 uh, this is 720 and this is 6 and this is 120 and this is 120 and the exterior angle is going to be 60 right so in this question 108 is the interior angle of this one so this also 108 and this also 108 so i'm sharing my idea so points around the point here 360 108 108 108 add them up and take away from 360 you will get the one topic 48 which is a circle theorems in the circle theorem you must familiar with the older theorems um, you may ask to prove the circle theorem or you must know the uh, theorem in order to do the angle question. The first theorem, angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. The next one, angles in the same segment are equal. So this is X means any segment is going to be same segment means this is the segment. So in this segment, any angles in the perimeter circumference are equal. Angle subtended at the circumference by a semicircle is 90 degrees. So from here, any angle, if you draw in the, uh, all the points are going to be the two points, the diameter points, and this becomes the 90 degrees. Semicircle angle is 90 degrees. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral is 180. So the opposite angle A and C is add up together 180 and the b and d add up together 180 tangents and radii meet at 90 degrees so the radius is this one tangent is this one is 90 degrees the next one tangents from a point have an equal length so 
from an outside point, if you draw two tangents, they are going to be equal length. For an example, if I draw this radius here, this is going to be 90 degrees, this is going to be 90 degrees. If I connect this one, these two triangles are going to be congruent triangles. You can prove that a congruent triangle and this angle equal to this angle and this angle equal to this angle. This and this are radius, right? Some additional information for you. The last theorem is alternate segment theorem. The angle between the tangent and the code is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So the alternate segment, this is the segment. Alternate segment means the opposite side. So this x is equal to this x and this y equal to that y. So here this is the segment, alternate segment is the other one, right? So you must familiar with the uh, wording and they will ask each and every question has to be done with the reasoning steps. So you need to write the proper theorem why you are doing this one. Topic number 49, congruent triangles. The congruent triangles are four types of congruent triangles. All three sides are equal to all three sides. You can prove the both triangles are congruent triangles. After the congruent, after the proof, you can say this angle equal to this angle. Because the triangle properties are six, three angles and three sides, you need three properties to make, make it congruent, proof. The remaining properties automatically will be equal. The second topic is SAS, side angle side. This angle must be a in between two sides. So side angle side is the second theorem. The third one, the angle angle side or angle 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 side angle, the two angles at a side can be, this is three and this also three. So two angles and a corresponding side, two angles and a corresponding side. If the side is coming in between the angle, has to be between. If the side is coming opposite to one of this angle, let's say I put a star mark here, and this star mark angle is opposite that. Side has to be corresponding side, has to be equal. So angle, angle, side. The last one, RHS, right angle, hypotenuse, and the side. So right angle, 90 degrees of one so a right angle triangle, and the hypotenuse side has to be equal. And another side has to be equal. So RHS um, is the last condition for the congruent triangle. Topic number 50. This is similar shapes in 2D. We have two topics 2D and 3D. Let's look at the similar shape 2D. So if two triangles are similar, all three angles are equal and the ratio between two sides are equal. For example, 5 here, 15 here. So here to here, always start with the bigger number. Scale factor equal 15 divided by 5, which is 3. That means this times by 3. So this 3 going to be times by 3 gives x equal 9. So that is the similar shape here. There's a diagram is given and they're asking you to find out the x. If I draw a small triangle and if I draw a bigger triangle, trying to understand the difference, the small triangle is 6 and 5 and the bigger triangle, the bottom one is x and that one is 8.5. Now, 8.5 and 6 are in the ratio because they are, looks like a same thing. So, 6 8.5 divided by 6, that ratio, 8.5 divided by 6, equal to x divided by 5. Now you can do the cross multiplication and you can easily find the x. Let's look at the x and sign question. Triangle PQR, STUR, mathematically similar. The scale factor is given 3 because here 6 becomes 18, so times by 3. So this 2x need to be times by 3 to get that one. So 2x times by 3 equal x squared plus 5. So if you rearrange that one, so x squared, 2x is going other side, 2x times 3 is 6x, so minus 6x plus 5 
equal zero. So that is the first part question. Second one, given QR is the shortest side, the time of PQR, find the value of x. So you need to factorize this one. We already revised this one. So you need to add the x minus 1, x minus 5 other factors. So x can be equal to 1, x can be equal to 5. So they clearly say QR is the shortest side. So QR is shortest meaning. So what would be the x answer? x answer should be 5. Then only 2 times x is 10. So x equal 5 is the possible answer and x equal 1 is not possible. Because if you put x equal 1, 1 times 2 is 2 and uh, so that 6 is a bigger size. So not possible. So that is the topic 50. Topic 51. Similar shapes 3D. So if you find out the length scale factor, so if the length scale factor is k, then area scale factor is k square. Volume scale factor is k cube. If you are going from a small object to bigger object, you times. And if you are going other way around, big to small, you need to divide by the scale factor. Say for example, this is 8 centimeter cube, 216 centimeter cube. So 216 divide by 8 it's going to be 27 so the 27 is going to be the k cube volume scale factor if you cube root it k equal 3 so the length scale factor is 3 area scale factor is 3 square is 9 so the volume is enlarged by a scale factor 3 cube so look at this question volume scale factor is 8 centimeter cube and 64 centimeter cube. So 64 divided by 8 is what? 8. That is k cube. Volume scale factor is k cube equal 8. Cube root is k equal 2. Then the length scale factor, height of the cylinder here, is 4 times by 2, k equal 2 means times by 2 is 8 is the answer. And that is the uh, topics. Um, Conditions you need to remember on a similar shapes 3D. Topic 52. Reflection. This is one of the transformation method. So the mirror line is a very important thing here. So whatever the shape you need to measure from the mirror line, then draw the reflection on the other side of the mirror. Right? So you could use the tracing paper, but I wouldn't. I just try to count the squares and uh, do the image. Say for example, uh, in this one, in this shape, they're saying the question is, um, reflect the, reflect, reflect shape C, D, E, D on the y-axis or on the, yeah, let's say on the y-axis. So if it is y-axis, we know this is the vertical line, so y-axis. I'm going to count uh, here 2 means here 2. So this is the first image. Here 1, 2, 3, 4 means 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And this one is 3, this is here 3. And that one is 1, 2, 3, 6. So 3, 4, 5, 6. Now you need to do connect the points. So that is the image of the shape C, D, E, D. So this becomes the C dash, this becomes the D dash, this becomes the E dash, and this becomes the B dash. So here, once again, the condition is the mirror line. If they ask you to describe the um, transformation, you need to find out where is the mirror line. So the shape... Um, reflection on the y-axis to get this image. Next topic is 53, translation. Translation always have a vector format translation. First one is the x on the top, y at the bottom. 
So right hand side x is positive, left hand side goes negative, top is positive and down is negative. So if I translate it 8 by 4, the top of this one, 8 and 4, is going to be like that. So the remaining will remain same. So 2, 3, 4 here and 2 here and you connect that one. So that is the final. By the next question, the blue object has been translated by the vector to produce the red image. So this translated to this one. So if you take, uh, let's say, the tip of this one, goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 is the x moment, positive, and down moment is 2, so negative 2. So vector is 5 minus 2, the answer is the b. Topic 54, enlargement. So enlargement means it can be a bigger shape or smaller shape or opposite reverse way. So opposite reverse comes as a negative scale factor. So in this first question, enlargement by scale factor 2, why scale factor 2? So this is 1 becomes 2 and the center point to 2 comma 2. So here 2 comma 2 is the center point here. So example, let me show you how to do this one. Example, enlarge the shape by scale factor 2, center point 2 comma 8. Center point 2 comma 8 is there. So first of all, we need to find out the scale factor is already given. So from this point, you can draw a construction line. I'm going to do it in a different manner. So this is 2 to the right, 1 to the down. So this is 2 and 1. The scale factor 2 means I'm going to multiply the 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 to the right. And 2 times 1 is 2, 2 to the down here. So this is the enlarged shapes object here. So then the shape green is 3 units length. So 3 times 2 is 6 unit length. So from here, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 5, 6 and 2 means 2 times 2 is 4 so that is 2, 4 and 4 and uh, this is the rectangle of the enlargement. So the next one example enlarge the shape by shape scale factor minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 means you need to do opposite way power. So from here, let's say this is we need to travel here um, 2 to the up and 2 to the right. So you have to do the opposite way. So 0 0.5 means you need to remember this is minus half. So half it and go opposite. So 2 units, uh, half is 1 unit, opposite means downwards 1 unit. And right hand side 2 units, so you go left hand side 1 unit. So basically what I am saying is this point comes as here. So if you want this point, 2 to the right, so 2 to the right and 2, 4, 6 to the down. So 2 to the right means you need to go 1 to the left and I am going down 6 and going up by 3. So this is the point. So the straight line becomes from here to here is the point. So if I change a different color, this point is 2 units right and 6 units down. So do the opposite half. Opposite half means 2 units right means 1 unit left and 6 unit down means 3 units means half of it, 3 units up. So this is that point. We got 2 points and this one is 4 units and that is going to be uh, 2 units here and the final object is going to be you connect these 3 and that is the shape you need to uh, focus on. So basically you need to um, 
to connect if you do the over the projection lines also going to the center and that is the way to do the enlargement negative scale factor topic 55 rotation so if you see this one three things important in the rotation so angle of the rotation direction of the rotation center of the rotation let's say um, before the rotation the smiley face rotate at 90 degrees comes here so entire object is rotating so here the rotation is said to be the anti-clockwise here this is called clockwise and this is anti-clockwise example rotate the shape 90 uh, shape 90 degrees clockwise by center point 24 so if you rotate this to this so from the 2 comma 4 this 1 2 3 4 5 6 unit from here 2 4 6 comes here and from here 2 and from here 6 and that is the object and uh, always remember rotating 90 degrees clockwise equal to rotating 270 degrees anti-clockwise so in your exam they if they ask for 270 degrees don't panic with your protractor 270 degrees 360 take away 270 is 90 degrees so if they talk about clockwise and you do the anti-clockwise 90 degrees so moving 90 degrees clockwise is same as moving anti-clockwise 270 so according to that you rotate the um, shape you can ask for the tracing paper in the exam hall you can't bring unfortunately any papers in your clear pencil box you can hands up and ask for a tracing sheet and you can use the tracing sheet for doing the rotation question topic 56 area of 2d shapes so you need to familiar with the basic area equation for the standard shapes square we know base times height or side times side rectangle side times width times length triangle half base height trapezium at the parallel sides a plus b divide by 2 times by height parallelogram base times height rhombus also same kind of parallelogram so you can use the base times height but if the rhombus is like the measurements heights the diagonal height and the diagonal length is given diagonal length times diagonal height divided by 2 if it is a kite same equation as rhombus uh, length times height divided by 2 but if the rhombus is drawn as uh, same as the parallelogram you can use the base times height equation that will work say for example i'm not going to do this question i'm trying to explain this question <coughs> you need to split this shape into a uh, couple of rectangles and uh, squares so this is a a is a square 3 times 3 and this is 2 times 4 is uh, b is 8 and if this is 9 and this is 5 and 2 uh, this is 3 so c is 9 times 3 27 so c is 27 a is 9 and b is 8 so add them up that gives the area for the compound chain and this one, it looks like if you imagine there is a triangle there and imagine there is a triangle here. So the paper is folded inside. So find out the triangle's area and find out this triangle's area. Every measurement is given 2 and 2 here and uh, this one is 5 and 2. Then take away from other uh, big um, triangle uh, big triangle or the trapezium shape right so the big shape is looks like like this and that is 3.5 plus 2 is 5.5 and 2 here and this is 2 2 and 5 is 9 and Parallel sides add up together, so 2 plus 5.5 and divide by 2 times by 9. That is the biggest trapezium area. Take away this two triangle gives the, the shaded area in purple. 
topic 57 area and circumference of circle you must familiar with this equation area of a circle is pi r square and uh, circumference of a circle is pi d or 2 pi r diameter is 2 times of radius and if they ask you to find out the shaded area in the example 1 find out the circle's area which is pi r square which is pi times 8 square which is diameter is 16 half is 8 square so you have the answer from the full circle area you take away the uh, area of the triangle so the area of the triangle you don't know the measurements so here is 30 here is opposite side is here as x here right and you can do the trigonometry to find out opposite over hypotenuse to find out the x or if you like you can use the Pythagoras theorem to find out the y so once you find out the measurements you can easily find out the triangle area half times base one of the x is the base and the height is y and take away from the surface area same thing here this is 8 means and if I put this as a x and this as a x, using the Pythagoras, you can write x squared plus x squared equal a squared. So from that, you can find the x answer. And the x answer, if you find it, you can times x times a, x. That is the square area of the square. Take away from the circle's area, which is radius is 4, pi times 4 squared. Then that is the shaded area. Here, the shaded area is, if you think this is a half a circle inside, here this is the half a circle outside. The measurements are not given, so you need to find out the radius of this one and find out the half area of this. And um, you need to find out the full diameter and the radius of the bigger circle and find out the half a circle of the bigger circle half pi r square and take away the, the smaller cir circle so if you take away the smaller circle here that area plus the half a circle 58 sector area and arc length so sector area means sector means the area subtended by two radii right so area of sector is theta is the embedded angle hanging between the two radii and theta over 360 times pi r squared is the formula. Arc length is the same formula theta over 360 times 2 pi r. So we are trying to get the fraction and times by 2 pi r for circum arc length and pi r squared for the um, sector area. So have a look at this already done a question here. Sector area is 3.7, this also 3.7. So 42 divided by 360 pi r squared that will give the answer and arc length is 42 over 360 pi d diameter is double of the 3.7 or you can put 2 times r and you can still use the 3.7 and you get the arc length. Example, find the area of the segment colored in purple. So to get that one, you need to find out the sector area which is 100 over 360 times pi r squared so pi times 7 squared which gives an answer then you need to take away so this is the sector area for area of the sector then you can find out the area of the triangle so triangle area what how to do the triangle area in trigonometry we haven't revised yet but as a formula, half A, B, sine C. So use that one to find out half times 7 times 7 times sine 100. So you get the answer for that one. From the sector area, if you take away the triangle area, you will get the segment area. That is the method to do that one. That is topic 58. And topic 59 is the surface area surface area of the cube if you say this is the x is the length of the cube x x x is all three sides are equal so one area you can say x square 
there's a six surface faces, so six x squared is the total surface area of the uh, cube. When it comes to cuboid, let's say this is x, this is y, and this is z, is the width. So x times y is x, y is this one, and x, y, another x, y behind here. So here, x, z here, another x, y behind here, and y, z is on the top, and the bottom also y, z. So the total surface area, two times of x, y, plus y, z, plus z, x, or x, z. Here, this is a triangular prism, triangular area, two triangle area, so two triangle area, plus three rectangle area. Cylinder. Cylinder, the front one is pi r squared, another pi r squared at the back. So 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. You need to remember this one, that is the curved surface. This is a flat surface and you apply the formula. The curved surface of the hole is pi r l. Careful, the l is the slant length and r is the radius and pi r squared is the bottom area plus pi r l. You have to read the question carefully. If they ask for a curved surface, only pi r l, the bottom flat surface is pi r squared. So total means at the north. So this one is square based pyramid. So one square at the bottom plus four triangular surface area. You need to find out and add them up. Example here, the diagram shows a 10 power with two triangles and the two uh, rectangles find out the surface area of the 10. So I'm not going to be finding the answer just to show the working. So triangle area, so triangle area half base 2.3 times height is 3.2. You get the answer for that. You need to times that, that by 2 because two triangles. And the 10 has 4 times 3.4. 4 times 3.4 is the rectangle, again times by 2 because 2 sheets either side, so that answer. So these two answers, you need to add them up to find the total answer. Remember, 10 is not cover the, the bottom um, land or surface. So you need to find out the only the two rectangles and the two triangles. Topic 16. This is the volume of the 3D shapes. So volume of the 3D shapes, these are prisms. So prism means you can find out the cross section area times the length. Cone, one third pi r squared h. Pyramid, one third the bottom area times the perpendicular height. Sphere, four third pi r cube. And the area of the sphere, remember, 4 pi r square, right? So find the volume of the first term here. So this is a, a cone, another small cone, and they taken off the small cone, and the remaining shape is called cross cone. So here, what you want to do, you need to use the similar triangles uh, idea. So here, this is 10, and this is 30. So this is 30 and this total is 50. So that means 20. So in this small triangle, this is 20 and this is 50. So if I draw the small triangle and the big triangle, right? So small triangle is 20, big triangle is 50. Big triangle is 10 and what would be this one, right? So this 20 times 2.5 is 50. So 10 divided by 2.5 is 4. So this radius we found 4, right? So area of the, sorry, volume of the small cone, volume of the small cone, one third pi r cube, which is 4 cube, so one third pi r squared, h is 20, 
volume of the big hole 1 third pi r square which is 10 square h is the the full height is 50 so find the answer for this find the answer for this and you need to take away from the big to small that remaining is called volume of the phosphor that is the topic 60 that is the end of this topic revision i hope you like this uh, video if you do like this video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel thank you is your child weak in mathematics do you spend much time at work and struggling to find a tutor for your children don't worry because we have an ultimate solution Smart Tutors brings you an amazing meld of mathematics coaching experience by tutors working successfully in UK for more than 12 years. Our website is an immersive learning experience that provides comprehensive, curriculum-aligned mathematics content for toddler, age 5, to teenager, age 18. Smart Tutor is a user-friendly website which enables you to download three mathematics worksheets for free. If preferred, the user can download thousands of mathematics worksheets and sample papers for the chosen age group for only £2.50 per month. Not just this, but if you wish to have private tutoring at home, if you are living in London 20 miles radius from Heathrow Airport, you can request for private tutoring by clicking the button and Tutor will contact the parent and arrange the class for your child at your own place. Smart Tutors also provides a facility to have tutoring via online tools. If you are interested, book your session now. You'll not need to wander for math tutors for your children anymore. Contact us today for a guaranteed 100% success.